Good morning all. Inside this box is a 50 watt LED floodlight. Uh, it's not mine, it belongs to my friend Paul, but I just thought I'd uh, have a look at it. I think it was reasonably cheap, about £14, or he may have bought two of these for 28 something like that. But let's have a look at it, uh, see what the construction is like, see whether it genuinely does draw 50 watts, and so on. It's uh, pretty big, you can see from my hand here how large it is, and I suppose to some extent that's um, in order to dissipate heat, you've got a large surface area here to uh, shift all the heat that this 50 watt LED generates. They do generate quite a lot of heat. It's uh, quite slim, quite low profile. The reflector really doesn't do much at all. I mean, the LED will emit light pretty much in a 180 degree arc anyway. Anything which bounces off the front of the glass will of course be sent back onto the reflector and then re-emitted, but um, I wouldn't imagine that reflector actually does a lot. So the label says it's a model GF50WB. Um, this is 50 watt, but I think it's warm white. Yes, it does say cover temperature warm white. Uh, AC 85 to 265, so we expect to see a switch mode uh, current regulator in there. 50 to 60 hertz, 50 watts output sizes and what you can use it for. Um, it comes with a, a connected uh, PIR detector, which will probably be the first thing to fail. These lamps always seem, it always seems from my experience, to be that the PIR sensor fails first. Now this one is highly likely to fail because for some bizarre reason, when this is pointing forwards, the controls are on the top. I don't think, no, that's actually got stops on it. So. Basically, this thing's been fitted the wrong way around. It's supposed to be like that with the controls on the bottom. But uh, so that's obviously going to have to be taken off if it can be taken off and flipped the other way around because that's not going to last very long with the controls and these screw recesses on the top. A ridiculously short piece of um, three core mains cable. I mean, that is just eight inches long. It's also uh, got very fine conductors. These are tin, so they feel quite stiff, but uh, they don't look very thick. Of course, that doesn't really matter because it's only 50 watts and it mains uh, potential. What's that, about 200 milliamps? There's nothing really in terms of current going through there. But they're obviously trying to save uh, money by reducing the amount of copper content in this thing. Uh, most of the rest of this, I would imagine, is aluminium. But yeah, that's ridiculously short. Well, I say it's going to be aluminium. I've got some magnets here. This is aluminium all around here. But this looks like it's painted steel. So uh, how long that's going to last, I don't know. Because typically on these things, the paint flakes off. I mean, I don't know whether paint adheres better to steel than it does to aluminium. But all the aluminium things that have been painted that I've got, it bubbles and flakes off. And uh, yeah, that's steel. That's aluminium. Oh, and of course that's plastic. Right, let's take this, uh, well, steel housing cap off first and uh, see what's inside this rear part. Right, the wires are so short in here that I can't tip this back on itself. So I've had to tip the whole thing up on end. There's a gasket here, which you have to sort of um, get in the right position so that this uh, traps down on it and keeps the water out. There are, uh, this, here's the incoming three pin cable. The earth is connected uh, on this one. It really should be, shouldn't it, with a, a metal box. You've got these uh, sort of twist, I suppose, connectors for live, uh, switched live from the PIR sensor and neutral. So that's all that's in there, just some connections. Uh, that's interesting, there's something trapped in here. Is this another? Free gift. That's a magnet. Actually, I'm just wondering whether that's uh, Paul's, because he said um, he checked this for the metal type. It's definitely steel. Yeah, there's some sort, of, some sort of magnet in here. That might be Paul's. That might not have been a free gift. So we haven't seen the LED driver yet, so I'm assuming it's in the main uh, section here, not in this back box. There wasn't anything much in that back box. Uh, this front glass 
I don't think it's glass, that appears to be plastic. Okay, let's undo these four screws and take the front off. Two, three. Okay, metal surround is steel. Uh, then we have this. Oh, actually, no, that is glass. That's definitely glass. It's heavy, and uh, I think you can probably see from the edge that that is most definitely glass. It didn't sound like glass. Uh, gasket, and then the reflector, which is held in <laughs> with two screws only. That's a bit nasty. Let's get those out. Right, okay, here's the uh, reflector, which is very thin. Aluminium is my guess. Now, this is odd. Why have they left? The protective film on this because if this thing gets hot this is just gonna shrivel up and is there any electrical reason why the protective film is on there I don't know okay inside just the LED now that's strange because I was expecting the LED driver to be in there so where's the LED driver did I miss it was it in here well, it's gonna be somewhere you can't have well unless this is the world's first mains powered LED held in with Three screws, it would seem. Oh, I did miss it. It's in the uh, rear box section here. Um, glued in with what appears to be, yeah, that's silicon rubber. So just glued in with silicon rubber. Unfortunately, they've glued it in upside down. So all I can see is the potted bottom of the driver. I can't see any um, uh, uh, wording or writing on top of that thing. But it probably just says 50 watt. LED driver, I'm sure it says AC85 to 265 or whatever it is. And here are the um, DC output, red and black, which is a current limited. Uh, voltage will move depending on what the LED actually draws. The current will be set to whatever a 50 watt LED requires. I think it's about one and a half amps. Right, I'm just going to disconnect temporarily the built in LED driver. So I'm going to unsolder one of these wires connect my own uh, boost pack here uh, we'll probably need depending on how many LEDs there's probably 10 in a column and five columns in parallel so it's probably going to be around um, 36 volts but I'm going to limit this thing to I don't know about half an amp initially and just see if I can power this up so I can see how many LEDs because it's not obvious from this how many LEDs are on this die and where they are let's just get in a bit closer while my soldering iron warms up. Yeah, I just can't make out anything underneath the um, this fairly dark yellow sort of rubbery stuff. I just can't see the LED. So I'm gonna light them up so that we can see how many there are. I mean, <laughs> I assume there are 50. Right, so I've got 40 volts, uh, 500 milliamps on here. So I'll just solder these on, switch on and see what we get. Actually, I've wimped out and gone down to uh, 100 milliamps because I'm not entirely sure that this is a, a 36 volt LED. So 100 milliamps, uh, 40 volts. Let's switch this thing on. This is this one where the uh, voltage rises up very slowly. And uh, let's see when this thing lights up. Ah, there it goes. And oh yeah, that's quite bright. Oh, and the inductors are all ringing. Uh, I'm gonna take the current down actually. So we're drawing 100 milliamps. Let's pull that down. 10 milliamps, that can't be right. Naught amps. Something's not right here. I'm gonna have to take the, um, let's go up to 50 milliamps and take the voltage down. I just want to see the layout of the LEDs. I can't see it if I've got it uh, that bright. 21, 22 volts. Right, there it is, just starting to light up. Right, you can just about see, it's very hard to get the uh, camera to respond properly to this. Uh, well, there's certainly five rows, one, two, three, four, five, and there are 10 LEDs in each row. Let me just get a little bit more light in here so that just takes that down. But you can just about see those uh, 10 LEDs per, well, I call them columns, 
so we've got 50 LEDs, they're one watt LEDs each, uh, but it comes on at about 25 volts, but won't be delivering full power um, until presumably, if these are one watt each, which they are, yeah, it'd be about an amp and a half. Right, that's fine. Let's uh, unsolder my connections. If I can get enough heat onto here, here, yep. and this one, yep, and put um, the original LED driver connection back. I can get to that. The main problem is dirt on the iron, I think. Well, there's a little solder splash there, so I'll just pull that out. Now, I'm just wondering whether they left this um, protective film on to act as an insulator uh, here, but there's a fair old bend return on this, so this sits fairly tightly down on the yellow section there. So it's unlikely these connections would touch onto this, but maybe that's why they've left it on. It does seem a bit odd though, because this is going to get very hot, but I'm going to leave it on. These screws, despite their short length, shouldn't really be countersunk because they're just not doing anything. That one's fully tightened and it's not gripping the reflector at all. I can't tighten that one anymore because it's sat down in the uh, threaded hole in the casting. So they shouldn't really be uh, countersunk. And uh, this gives me an opportunity to centre the reflector on the LED because I noticed when I first took it apart it wasn't very well centred, but it is now. But that's just floating about in there. I think that's just going to be held down by the glass front. Right, let's put the uh, gasket back on, which has um, a sort of raised rear section. Yeah, you can just about see that. Uh, and that sits in that channel in the... Uh, in the uh, aluminium case. I'm trying to think of a word for how this aluminium is made. It's probably cast, isn't it? Cast aluminium. Right, that seems to be in place. Let's put the glass on. Right, I'll just give this a wipe with a microfiber to get my mucky fingerprints off it. I mean, I want this to look nice when I give it back to Paul. Okay. Now I'm doing up the four bolts on the front and I'm kind of doing them a bit cylinder head style where you sort of do opposite corners to try and balance the uh, pressure. It's probably not entirely necessary but that's what I'm doing anyway. But that looks much nicer doesn't it with a properly centred reflector on the front. That's probably enough. Okay let's flip it over. Right final thing let's see if it draws 50 watts. Actually, it should draw a little bit more because if you've got 50 watts uh, being dissipated in the LED, you're probably losing a little bit in the LED driver, which is glued just behind here. Um, so I'd actually expect to see probably about 55 watts on here. I don't think we will somehow. Um, now, how am I going to connect this thing? Because I've got my super short uh, cable here, which I use for my oscilloscope, and I need to connect it to that. Oh, what do you think? Shove them in there. It's a bit naughty, but let's do it. Now the problem is I don't know which one's live and neutral, um, but it actually shouldn't matter really because the, um, I mean, the input to the LED driver, it's not really going to have a live and neutral. It's all going to be symmetrical. So I don't think it really matters. Sometimes it says L and N on here, uh, but I can't remember. Actually, there is another one here. Perhaps it says it on here. Let's have a look. Oh, it does look. NL so I can uh, do it properly. So I've got this in there and I'm trying to wedge bits of cocktail stick in but I've come to the conclusion that I'll probably get so badly flamed for doing this that I'm going to do it properly because I just I just not sure I want to read all the negative comments. Uh, so I found this in a component drawer somewhere and I'm just going to solder that on. I'm not going to bother to heat shrink it so I will just have to be a little bit careful, but uh, my plug can plug in there. Let's just warm the iron up, my iron which is drawing 18.3 watts. Right, I have gone to considerable trouble to um, put a proper socket on here and a little insulating boot, which I also found. Ouch, that's hot. Still hot from the soldering. 
Uh, okay, so we're looking for the uh, power, and I'm just going to lift the lamp up on one side so we can see the thing light up. And uh, we're looking for 55 watts. Let's see what we get. One point eight. Now I'm just wondering whether this hasn't triggered yet. Uh, maybe I need to twiddle the knobs on here to make that turn the light on. Oh, it has turned the light on. Now we're only getting forty point eight watts. So somewhere between forty and forty-one watts. This thing is lit up, isn't it? Yeah. So that is a little bit disappointing. Um, they're obviously under driving this slightly. It would have been quite nice to see what was written on the LED driver, whether that was actually marked as a 50 watt. But no, it's not drawing 50 watts. It's now dropped actually below 40. So this is a 40 watt floodlight. Uh, but the PIR sensor seems to be working. Oh, I think it must have detected the, uh, the warm desktop where the sun's on it. That's come back on. Let's just have a quick look at that from the front. It's just going to dazzle the camera. But there it is, the 50 watt LED running at, sadly, a bit below 40 watts is working. Good. And uh, actually, it is worth noting the standby uh, power, I suppose you'd say, for the PIR sensor is 1.8 watts because it's going to be drawing that constantly 24 7. That does seem quite high for a little bit of electronics there to be drawing nearly two watts but I don't expect the uh, circuitry in there is particularly clever it's probably something like a mains dropper circuit well I suppose while we're here we could and probably should have a look inside this um, PIR unit I'm hitting my camera here um, I'm a bit nervous about doing this because the seals in these are really the weak point of this whole thing but um, let's have a look and see if it is a capacitor dropper Ooh. circuit. Okay, one second. And uh, yeah, it certainly seems to be a capacitor dropper. If I just tip that up a bit. Um, there isn't much in this top section. This is the mains board. There's a relay there. That's fairly obviously a relay. There's an electrolytic there to smooth the output from the capacitor dropper. This is the main capacitor. And then it's hard to see, but there is a fairly chunky resistor behind there, behind there and not much else. So that's a capacitor dropper with the relay. Here's the uh, PIR board. This does actually come out. It's uh, pretty horrible the way these pegs all have to be lined up with the pots. Hopefully they are still lined up. I've not moved anything. But yeah, that comes out. Uh, oh, what have we got there? We've got uh, oh an LM324. So no special purpose um, chip there. There's the PIR. There's the LDR, the light dependent resistor daylight sensor with a little squiggle on the top of it. And a transistor there. What's that? Oh, a 9013. I can't remember whether that's PMP or NPM, but it's, uh, I think it's 2SC9013, something like that. Yeah, pretty straightforward little circuit there. Right, now I've got to see if I can realign these square section pegs with the holes in the three potentiometers. There is actually a little gasket, a little rubber band running all around there, which should sit down on top of this. Let's see if this lines up and everything goes back in. Yes, I think that's lined up and these now should turn uh, and turn the potentiometers. Okay, let's get the screws back in because I don't really don't like fiddling around with these things for fear of, uh, I don't know, damaging the seal or something. So that's it. It's all back together. I cut these wires off. I couldn't be bothered to unsolder them. Paul will have to deal with that. Oh, another thing I forgot to do is I was meaning to turn this round uh, so that the uh, control pots aren't on the top. Paul will have to do that. Sorry, Paul. Now I'm going to have a quick look on uh, eBay for this thing, see if I can find it and provide a link to it. As I say, uh, Paul said it was £14. He said it came from a, a company in Southall, which is in West London. So it's a UK purchase. Uh, if I can find the item on eBay, I'll provide a link to that. But for the moment, that's it. That's the 50 watt floodlight. Cheerio.